Hi guys, Professor Salt here, and today what I thought I would do is go through how I'm setting up my, uh, my Raptor for fishing offshore. So, let's get to it. Front end is pretty simple. Inside the front hatch, I'm running only one main thing, and that is my rig hook. So the rig hook, I took a decent, pretty nice uh, golf club. This one's a night light speed, but it's carbon fiber, it's lightweight. I cut the end of it off, and I stuck a piece of aluminum rod in there. It's pretty flexible. You can bend it around to whatever shape you want. So I put mine a pretty deep curve, big enough to catch the rungs on the ladder on the offshore rigs. Attached a piece of paracord. That comes around about eight feet. And I have a bungee cord where I tied to the bungee on both sides. And then I've got a float. Label it. You lose it. People will return it to you. And then I've got a stainless clip. So offshore, when you come unhooked from the rig, you're going to be 20 feet away from the rig. Your float will be, will be there. If you unhook and get away from it, you can come back and retrieve it pretty easily. Okay, the next thing I've got is a, a star port and I like this little short extension with a mount that lets me put my camera I lock it on I can rotate this however I want I can also extend it out but I still I already had them so I left the uh, ball head on there so I can loosen it I can move wherever I want to to get shots without having to readjust here which is just a little simpler you twist it you move it where you want twist it back and I also keep a leash so that when I put my camera here it leashes on and it won't come off if I pull it loose and operate it by hand I have to be careful I need some kind of a float on it but at this point don't have that uh, instead of a crate I'm now going with the Santa Cruz pod for the center and I can put everything that used to be in my crate is now here. I have a 60 inch tape for a backup. I have my wire cutters in case I get a hook in me. I got my sunscreen. I got my jigs for at the rig. I want to catch red snapper. My lure bag and all my skirts that goes nicely in there of course I got my seat for cobia <laughs> you need to be able to uh, encourage a cobia to behave that does a really nice job of it usually after uh, two or three encouragements <laughs> they're unconscious you can pull them right on board without any without too much fight um, I've got some leashes and some of you guys asked me about the leashes hey those aren't your homemade leashes no they're not but I'm working with yak gear and they sent me some leashes and said hey for offshore how do these work they sent me one with the typical aluminum they sent me one with a stainless steel clip I like all of them but they work well I can tuck them in in here so they're not really in the way and for rod holders I'm using a star port works really simple gets out of the way you can plug it up it's smooth it's out of the way and and doesn't take up a lot of space on the deck I started out with these straight out and decided you know what if I put them back one notch and instead of horizontal I moved them up one notch and I've got a big ugly stick tiger rod does it fit in here yes yes it does so that fits in you can see on the other side I've got my spinning tiger rod it fits in a little easier than the casting side and then I have a second star port back here that I put my camera extension on it will twist around it'll twist 
up and down. It's made for cameras. And the other cool thing about it, I can extend it to about five feet above the deck. I don't usually want it that far. Usually that's great right there and I can look down and you can watch me land the fish. And then a little further back, I'll keep my gaff. Again, this is a carbon uh, shaft for a golf club. And the hook, you can see the hook is not real big. The store-bought gaff hooks tend to be four inches and I don't like that much gaff hook for kingfish. I like it a little shorter. And a lot of store-bought gaffs tend to be sticking out at like a 45. And that's a recipe for losing fish. I bring it back. I want all the way where it wraps around facing the handle. That way when you hook a fish, the fish stays on the hook. The other thing I've done is I added a piano hinge to my bump board that I built. It's 50 inches long that I can measure. Uh, it's PVC trim board from Home Depot. With that, with that idea of a piano hinge, on the back side I took two 90 degrees, drilled it onto the bottom, and that way when I raise it up, it stops at 90. The nose board is not real solid, but it's on so that when the fish is on here, the nose bumps into the front. All you got to do is twist the tail down, take an easy measurement, you hold one hand on top of the middle of the fish, and right here you can tell what you've got. So those two together ride atop the fish bag. And the fish bag, I, took an, I built an aluminum frame, I'll show you this in a different video, put a crossbar that fits on, and I use, you can see the strap that goes across the back of the Raptor tank well, and I strap over the crossbars on both sides. So my fish bag is not coming off. It doesn't want to shift around. It can't go front or back. So it's pretty much where you put it. And it's easy. When I catch a fish, I turn sideways in the water. I can open up the fish bag and see right in there. The fish goes in. He tends to slime the top of my chair. That's all right. A little bit of water, wash it off. I seal it up. Bags are back on top and we're good to go. I do have a bungee that goes across the top to hold the measuring board and the, and the gaff. But they ride pretty securely there. I've had it in some pretty rough surf and it doesn't tend to want to come off. So it rides well. On the left, right side of the yak, I'm a lefty. I like to land my fish on the left side. On the right side, I left this spot open for my paddle. So I'll always put the paddle out of the way, out of the action, so I can land the fish on the other side of the boat where it's easier for me. I've got my bat on the other side, so if I bring a cobia in, tap him on the head a few times, and he'll come on in without too much incident. So that's pretty much what I'm what I'm doing to run my Raptor